Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, there is not anything more powerful than the marching feet of a determined people. As a kid, there was not much I could aspire to. We were diminished in the way we thought that we could access power and be part of the American fabric. And so, with this gigantic march, we were saying to the world, this land of great opportunity, this land of liberty, has an asterisk beside it. It is a land of freedom for everybody else except black people. Prior to Martin Luther King Jr., the United States was like a dysfunctional drug addict or alcoholic. It had become addicted to racial segregation. At the end of the Second World War, we were under the belief, if we were triumphant over fascism, that the men and women who returned from that conflict would be celebrated and honored. When I was growing up in rural Alabama and would see those signs that would say, white waiting, colored waiting, white men, colored men, I would ask my mother, my father, my grandparents, why? They would say, that's the way it is. Don't get in the way. I first knew of Dr. King the way everybody knew of Dr. King. All of a sudden, one day in the midst of this turmoil in some faraway place called Montgomery, Dr. King, uh, was pressed into service and took over the leadership of the Montgomery bus boycott. We heard of him almost immediately uh, because not only did he accept the leadership, but he pressed this idea that we should do it nonviolently. I was deeply inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to find a way to get in the way. So I used nonviolence by sitting on a lunch counter stool, by going on a freedom ride to get in the way. The Freedom Ride was an attempt to break the segregation laws on interstate transportation, on buses, and on trains. There were six whites on the Freedom Ride and seven blacks. We would sit together, black and white, and Rock Hill, South Carolina, was where we encountered the first violence, with John Lewis being pretty well beaten up. The federal government finally intervened, and these early victories only encouraged us that we could do other things. They were very smart media-wise, because they dressed up and put the ties on and put the jackets on. They were looking good. And they are going up against the authority. They're going against the man. That was tremendously exciting to us as young white Southerners. As the nonviolent uh, concept grew, parallel to that was also the growth of an eye for an eye, uh, violence. And there were many who were quite bright and quite gifted and honorable men and women who saw violence as an answer that just did not quite sit comfortably with the code that others of us had, saying that although racism was a cruel experience, we could not fight it by becoming racists. In Birmingham, Alabama, the nation was treated with television images of black and white boys and girls having high-pressure fire hoses, slammed them up against the walls as they were peacefully demonstrating to end segregation. Police dogs biting them. These pictures were circulated all around the world. But those demonstrations were like a spark that ignited a prairie fire of black protests across the country. And Kennedy, on the one hand, he's trying to win Africans and people and say, we are a better system than communism. And at the same time, there was this harsh treatment of black people that just didn't square in the final equation. And the more we were feisty in our demands of government, the more it revealed the weaknesses in our own construct. What started out as black Negro protests had developed into a Negro revolution. There was a feeling that we would not be able to break the Deep South. So that march on Washington 
was uh, to be the culmination of all of this intense organizing. It really has to be a moral crusade for the country. The struggle for freedom in the United States it had to move to the center of power, to where the president and the Congress were, that no matter how many demonstrations took place in Montgomery and in Birmingham and in places all around the South, that until you could change the central government, significant things wouldn't happen. The march on Washington was an accumulation of all this, because here would have been the biggest display of America in its most democratic uh, moment, making a choice, and it was something that was emerging as a great demonstration as to the will of the people. If that day erupted into violence, then uh, our cause would be seriously uh, reversed and uh, hard to come by again. Well, you're free, don't be the last time that I don't know things this day.